I, a mixed-race, 21-year-old female, was adopted when I was a year old. I was adopted with my little brother to a white family with five other kids. They first just wanted to foster us, but fell in love and adopted us. Here's the crazy backstory. The state I lived in was given a grant for all the non-white babies they placed in homes. So a lot of non-white babies were adopted fast. I was born in 1999. My birth mother had her other kids taken away from her, so she left the state before the social worker got to the hospital. Since I was born with drugs in my system, I had withdrawals and had seizures, but was never taken to the hospital out of fear. My birth mom got high and went into labor with my brother while visiting her dad, so we were back in the state she ran from. When my brother was born, the head nurse called CPS. They got to the hospital fast after they learned their lesson the first time. My birth mom never saw my little brother. I was a year old in the recovery room with my birth parents, and the worker came in to tell her they were taking my brother. Seeing me, they asked who I was. She at first said I was her niece, till my birth dad, not getting what she was doing, told the truth. They took me too, and she never came to court date. They took us on Thursday, and my now family got us on Friday. We joked that we were to buy one. Get one free since when they adopted us, the state gave them a discount for keeping us together. She went on to have two more kids and one was taken and she got cleaned raising her last one. When I was 18, I found her on Facebook and we met. I occasionally visit her. She's a little bit much for me. When I told my parents her side of the story about how bad she wanted us, they showed me the files that proved otherwise. She even had another couple set up to pay her $9,000 for my little brother and my parents had to go to court to keep my brother with their couple. What kind of person sells their baby? Well, I had a baby in December. I'm half black and half Caucasian. My husband is completely Caucasian, so our son came out fair-skinned. My birth mom is fair-skinned and my birth dad is very dark, so I'm what they called light-skinned black. My birth mom started calling my son her baby, telling everyone he looks like her and not me. She told me, if someone asks whose baby he is if we are out in public, I'm going to tell them mine because that's more believable. He was born on the 10th of December, so because of COVID, we were only letting close family who had their TDAP shot, flu shots, and quarantined for a week without symptoms to see the baby in person. It was Christmas Eve, which happens to be my husband's grandpa's birthday. We absolutely adore each other, he tells my husband's cousin. I'm the favorite grandkid. They had done everything we asked, and he wanted to see the baby for his birthday. The day before my birth mom asked if she could come visit the baby. I tried to explain. It was only immediate family and all the requirements. She didn't care and showed up to our apartment while we were gone. My mom called me, saying she showed up to her house, crying, saying we were keeping her baby from her. We felt bad and let her see him, the whole time saying her baby. She then told me that my dad's birthday was coming. I was confused because my dad's birthday is in May. She meant my birth dad and was furious when I was confused. I explained to her that since they didn't raise me or help at all, that I didn't see her as my parents. I told her I was grateful for her and sympathized with her, but she had to understand where I was coming from. She stood up with my baby to leave. My husband tried to take the baby back, but she kept saying grandparents have rights. She wouldn't sit down and I couldn't help much since I had a rough C-section, so I called the police. When the police came, we explained the situation and she claimed grandparent rights again. The officer explained to us that it was a real thing and she would have to go to court, though. He gave us our son back. I work in property management, and I've seen some nonsense overall. When touring prospects, sometimes I deal with them and their parents. Normally, it's them just standing back watching their kids navigate and asking questions on their behalf. But sometimes I get straight-up mama boys. I've had two that stick out to me. First, there was a kid who was applying with a friend of his. He was 19 and they were in a hurry. This happens when people put in notice and then scramble to find a new place before their lease ends. They both didn't have rental history, so they went in with the prepayment plan. This just means you pay last month's rent when you move in. A lot of people do it so they passed their background checks and I gave them the move-in information. 
They are set to move in like two days. Sign the lease online. Pay in advance. Pretty easy lease. Enters the entitled mother. She calls the day they move in. Very angry. Me. Hello and thank you for calling. This is Apartment Complex X. Entitled Mother. Do you know that you rented illegally to a minor? Um, can you explain further, ma'am? This lady goes on a rant for about 15 minutes about how her legally of age son moved out and how I was breaking the law for renting him and his friend a home. She also told me she was going to sue me for renting to him. Now, due to fair housing, I can't even confirm or deny if someone lives here unless it's to a police officer. And she hated that, called me everything under the sun and while telling me I was stealing her baby boy from her and how I was going to pay for it. Turns out she went on vacation, and when she got home her son moved out everything of his, without telling her or his dad. She demanded that I end the lease and make him move out and at which point I just laughed. We ended up legally banning her from the property because we caught her trying to break into our secured buildings, trying to find out what apartment her son was in. Poor kid even rented a garage so that she couldn't find his car. Second story. I toured an almost 30-year-old man and his mother who were touring. While taking down the information on what kind of home are you looking for, when are you looking to move? Is there anything you would like in your next home? The mother answered everything and when I finally got to the point where I'm like I need your phone number and email. The mom tried to give me hers. I was getting confused and asked point blank who was living in the home, thinking maybe I misunderstood something. I finally got his information and after touring, I finally got him to open up a little. He really liked the one bedroom where the entitled mother was underwhelmed when they left. I was unsure if I would ever hear back from them. A few days later, when I was doing my follow-ups, she emailed me and said her son was no longer interested in our property. I was very surprised when I saw her son's application come through. He was approved on his own and a move. In date was set. He signed his lease online, but when I went to set up a move, in time, radio silence. He comes in the day before with his mother, saying that he needs to cancel his lease. This woman stood over her 30-year-old son as he wrote me nearly $4,000 for breaking a 12-month lease because he didn't pick the apartment she liked. I could tell he was humiliated and I was so embarrassed for him. It was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever had to do at my job. I haven't been on Reddit lately due to a personal matter with my girlfriend. Her only remaining grandparent caught COVID and was hospitalized. We left town together and drove a couple hundred miles to go and support my girlfriend's family. Because my girlfriend and I have been together for so long, I'm rather close to her family. Her parents often joke that one day I'll be their son-in-law whether I like it or not. But while my girlfriend and I were away, my mother found out where my sister and future brother-in-law live now. I kind of expected that to happen at some point. But I figured after saying we were disowned that maybe my mother would leave us alone. But evil mama bear will always be evil mama bear, won't she? While hundreds of miles away from home, I got a warning from my cousin that visits my mother that she'd found out some time ago where my sister was living by spotting her at the local supermarket and following her car home. Apparently, evil mama bear just didn't say anything to anyone that she knew for a while, but let it slip to my cousin that she knew and was giddy about getting her daughter back, as she supposedly put it. My sister is a creature of habit and tends to go shopping at the same places and times weekly, and our mother knows that, so her tracking down my sister this way isn't all that surprising. But my sister never goes out without her fiancé anymore, and he told me he's always packing a taser now. Apparently, evil mama bear waited till I wasn't around to make her move. She's craftier than I gave her credit for. I phoned my sister that I'd heard from our cousin that evil mama bear knows where she lives and to be ready. And the following day, evil mama bear showed up at my sister's front door with flowers and the Bible. She rang the doorbell several times and my sister did not answer. So she resorted to crying and banging on the door to make a scene. And finally, my future brother-in-law answered, and he had both a wireless camera nearby on a table and a police-style body cam that I gave them to record with, just in case this happened. 
As soon as my future brother-in-law opened the door, evil Mama Bear threw her arms out like she was gonna hug and kiss him, only to pull back as soon as she realized my sister wasn't the one to open the door. She looked completely stunned to be face to face with my future brother-in-law for a moment before finally speaking, Mom, I'm looking for my daughter. Please let me see her. Future brother-in-law, I don't think so. Whatever you want to say, you can say from here. Please, I have to talk to her now. This is all a huge misunderstanding. My sister emerges from another room. What I understand, Mom, is that you are a racist who hates my fiancé, demanded I abort my baby and then tried to attack me. Then you disowned me by saying you no longer have any children. What about that was a misunderstanding? Mom holds up the Bible. Please, I wasn't myself then. I've done a lot of soul-searching and gone to church. I've found God. Come home. You can live in my bedroom. I'll sleep in the basement. I'll even let your boyfriend move back into... Total lie. My cousin would have told me if she was going to church. She hates it. She'd probably start burning alive if she even set foot in one. And from what my cousin also told me, she's never once stopped referring to my future brother-in-law by racial slurs. Sister, oh, what about how you referred to us all as racial slur? and then broke Craigle's windows with rocks that had more racial slurs written all over them. I did what I had to do. Craigle ruins everything. Craigle didn't ruin anything. He just finally opened my eyes to what kind of person you really are and what person I let you turn me into, mother. Don't you mean mommy? No, I mean mother. I'm never calling you mommy again, okay? Mom starts bawling and holding up the Bible again. But the Bible says to honor thy father and thy mother, future brother-in-law. Yeah, and it also says not to provoke your children to wrath. Have you even read it? Or did you just buy it along with those flowers on the way here? But the Bible says not to lie, steal, commit adultery, or bear false witness. How many of those are you guilty of, huh? Sister, all of them. Mom throws everything in her hands to the floor. It's Kragel, isn't it? He's turned you against me. Everyone is against me, she said while stamping her foot. Kragel didn't do anything to do that. It was all you. Then I kid you not, my mother let out a loud noise and then proceeded to lunge at my sister. But my future brother-in-law intercepted her and had her pinned on the floor in seconds pretty easily, as she's not a big woman. Future brother-in-law. Honey, call the police. Mom, you can't do this to me. I am your mother. You're supposed to love me. From there on, it was just some repetitive nonsense while my future brother-in-law held her down until police arrived. Predictably, as soon as they showed up, evil Mama Bear started screaming. Mom, help. This racial slur is attacking me for just wanting to see my daughter. He's brainwashed her. Do something. I do not want her near me. Evil Mama Bear struggled a bit more, and the cops had to restrain her. She ended up screaming at them that they were all racial slurs, too, which got her a shiny new pair of bracelets and a frog march into a police car. The police got a copy of the camera footage, and then carted Evil Mama Bear off to jail, still waiting to find out how that one is gonna go down. My future brother-in-law has mentioned possibly wanting to go after her for a hate crime because of the racial slurs she used. Sis threw the flowers into the trash. And my future brother-in-law dropped the Bible that she'd brought with her into a church donation bin. He said it looked like the kind you'd find in a department store book rack anyway. I still can't do a lot because I'm not at home. But my sister and future brother-in-law said that they are gonna file for their own restraining order soon.